Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of No Flight Images and in this video I'm going to look at some of the top reasons, uh, answers to the question I'm often asked, why do my prints come out wrong? Lots of variations of this, my prints don't look right, they don't match the screen, it's another thing altogether, but why don't they look right? There are perhaps 10 reasons for this and I'll go through them in order of the most common Things you need to consider if you're looking at high quality photos. Uh, this is where you're actually printing and want to make pictures that you're happy to show to other people. Maybe not just for your own family use, but you want something a bit better quality. And look at the deeper issues of what you're actually trying to achieve with your printer. So um, there are lots of other articles and links. So do check out the links um, on this video, which go to articles that discuss this and other videos that discuss aspects in more detail. Because I'm only really just going to go over the key ideas. If one of them rings a bell with you, follow it up, follow up the links and see whether it helps. And um, I'm always happy to answer questions on the uh, comments for this video and directly via Norflight. So anyway, start off. What's the most common problem for prints coming out wrong? The usual one I get asked and have been for perhaps the last 15 years is my prints are too dark. They come out too dark. And there's a simple explanation for this almost all of the time. And that is that your monitor is set too bright. If you set your monitor too bright, you adjust it looking at the monitor, you adjust the levels and things, you print it out and the print comes out and because you've been edited it on a bright monitor, you've opened up the shadows. When you print it, the tonal range is compressed because there's a smaller tonal range in prints than there is on a screen and the usual effect is they look dark, the shadows crunched up and things. Well, simple way is to make your monitor less bright. Um, turn it down. Um, now, I've, been, I've suggested this to people and then they've said, yeah, but if I do that, it's too dim for the room. I'm editing it. Um, the answer to that one is don't edit in such a brightly lit room. If you absolutely must, then accept that you may have to lighten your prints on the screen to make them come out on the, uh, on the print okay. Because what looks best on the screen doesn't always automatically lead to the best looking print. And uh, that's an important thing to realize, but I'll cover that in some of the other areas as well. Secondly, your monitor's wrong. If your monitor shows you the wrong colors, the wrong tonal graduations, um, your prints are likely to come out wrong. Uh, it's as simple as that. There's an easy fix for it, uh, a thing called a monitor calibrator. Um, if you're a bit short of cash, if you're a member of a photo club, buy one of these, share it around to people. Um, you only need to do it every few months. If that, depending. If somebody else is using your monitor and they're likely to change the settings, then yes, you probably need to do it more often. But although they have reminders in the software to do it, you don't need to do it that often. Even at my professional level of editing stuff and the monitors I've got, I only check them every three or four weeks. Um, I don't do the kind of work that requires weekly checks. Um, not that many people do, and certainly not most people inquiring about the printing their own photos. So there you go, it's a monitor calibrator. That's one of the i1 models, there are others available. Oh, and you do not need to leave them plugged in when they're not in use. Put them away, put them in a drawer, keep them out of the way, use them when you're now. Um, I can use this one for this, and this screen is being driven from a laptop, so I can calibrate that as well. Although laptop screens in general are not brilliant quality. If you get a chance and you're keen to do editing and you have to use a laptop, get an external screen. I've covered loads of stuff about this. Next up, how are you editing your photos? Um, simple question. Photos come out of the camera. What do you do to them before you print them? If you are simply taking them out of the camera and printing them, then yeah, it might work, but it's more likely not to work. Almost all photos need some little bit of tweaking uh, before you print them. Um, how much is entirely up to you depends also on the photography you do. This example here had very little. Um, I exposed it. It's a, you know, a, a early evening scene. We've got the streaks of light from cars going past. Uh, this is 
fairly close to what came out of the camera. Now that's unusual. I still wouldn't print it though without at least going in editing, checking the levels, checking various things, how it's going to print, because that really does make a difference. Now, there's lots of different photo editing packages. I use Photoshop, used it for years. I don't use Lightroom. Um, lots of people swear by it. I personally swear at it, but you know, that's a personal preference. Try something like Affinity Photo. I could do almost all my work using something like Affinity Photo. Um, I'm not going to go into it. It's a huge bit of software um, and it's nice and cheap, certainly cheaper than uh, Photoshop. But I'm using an old version of Photoshop here. This is Photoshop CS6, so years old, but it still works. It still does all the key things I want to do. And that's important. So consider how you're editing photos. If you are just taking them off your phone or something like that and printing them, then good luck to you. Uh, they may come out all right, but then again, they may not. Next of all, when you are printing, what print settings are you using? Are you using the right print settings? Now, I know on when I set up a new printer, and I've done lots of printer reviews, so have a look at those if you've got a specific printer you're interested in. It's easy with some setups to install the wrong printer driver. Particularly if you ever see the word, um, I'm using a Mac here, if you ever see the word air print connected to your printer driver on your computer, you've got the wrong printer driver. But as I said, discuss that elsewhere. Um, it's the sort of thing that if it happens, you wonder where have all my controls gone for the printer dialog. You know, and, and air print is one of the things that do that. It's aimed at making things easy for people wanting to print from their iPad, the phone, on, direct onto a printer. Um, it can make it easy, but it can also get in the way and cause real problems for people because it's a sort of thing. The first time I saw it, I thought, what's going on here? What have I done wrong? And um, yeah, it was just the wrong driver. Um, the other thing is, in perfecting your print settings, you ideally need to test them un in a way unconnected with your photographs. And here comes something I'm a great believer in, and it is the use of test images. Now, I have one on the back here, this test image. This is one that I've got for download on the Northlight Images website. Um, it's one I've used for years. It comes from Datacolor, who gave me permission to host it years ago. Um, and here is a print version of it. Now, given the vagaries of shooting video here and lighting and screens and things, I'm not expecting a great match between this and this. It should look similar, um, but the key is take a test image, print it as you would one of your photos, and see what the print looks like. There are, in the download for this, there's loads of instructions as to what all these little images mean and how you use them and what you look for in it. So yeah, there's lots of information potentially inside uh, in all of these little photos here, even black and white down the bottom here, which is a slightly different matter, printing black and white. But test image, test print. If your test print comes out wrong in some way, then your printer settings are wrong. It's highly unlikely to be anything to do with the screen or anything like that. All you are doing is printing a test image. And if this test image comes out wrong, then you've done something wrong. It's why I print it when I'm testing a new printer, because I get things wrong. Uh, I test all kinds of stuff and I can never remember the exact settings I might have used for something. Yeah, sure, I write it down sometimes. I've got my articles and stuff I've done, but I never know for certain. Um, so I always test a new printer with an image like this. Because if this comes out wrong, what hope have I got for printing one of my, one of my own photos? Not a lot. Uh, this particular version of it has another one of my own pictures on it that I know this, these colours here test certain aspects. That's just for personal testing. This is the one that you download. This is the one that you test. This is just one of my own extras added into it. So that's it. You know, uh, what are your print settings? Uh, next, is your printer up to the job? Um, there are good printers and there are not so good printers. Basically, if you have a small printer, an A4 size or letter size printer, or that or something um, smaller than that, it is unlikely you are going to get great photo prints out of it. That's not to say you can't get 
half decent, reasonable looking photo prints, but you're not going to look great prints. Now I've done another video about why you don't get the quality with smaller printers and why you need larger printers for that. Um, and I have to say, of course, the advantage of a larger printer, even if you print small images, is that occasionally you can print something big. Um, and big prints are a great way of stretching your photography and improving your photography overall. But really you want to make sure that your printer is up to it. That includes using third-party inks. If you're using cheap third-party inks, then expect unpredictable results. Um, I never test third-party inks. They are too variable. There's too much need changing for it. From that, I also would suggest that if you are not printing using printer profiles or ICC profiles as they're known, then you are missing out a serious aspect of getting good print quality. Um, ICC profiles, they're widely available, they're supplied with the printers, paper suppliers can supply them to you as well, you can get them made. They make a key difference. Um, one of the disadvantages of using cheap third-party inks, or even expensive third-party inks, is that you can need to make a whole new set of printer profiles. Now, if you're okay with making printer profiles, then I'm going to suggest that most of the points here are probably you've thought of long ago and addressed. If you haven't, well, you should have done. Um, making printer profiles can be useful. Um, it's, it's a thing in its, own, in its own right as something to do. Um, for most people, I'd say, use the ones from the manufacturer, app in extremes, get one made for you, or just ask the paper supplier, because they'll often have paper profiles. But that is a key thing, paper profiles. Now, whilst on the subject of being cheap, um, if you use cheap ink, I've said problems there, Cheap paper is another problem. Um, I get people who say, I've got such and such paper or card. This is typically when they're printing greetings cards. And they'll go, well, I'm doing this. And it comes out weak. The colors are washed out. The print is, you know, just doesn't look any good. Well, you need proper photo papers. I've tested loads of them. There are loads of details on the Northlight website about different papers I've looked at. Do remember though, that I'm in Leicester in the UK, which means that the range of papers I have here may not be available where you are, but there's likely going to be something similar from a local supplier. I use one local supplier here in Leicester, um, Paper Spectrum, and get all kinds of papers from them. But in the reviews of it, I always say this is very much like and give you the specifications so you know what papers to get. But you know, use good quality paper. Good quality materials help ink, paper, um, and printer as well. But as I mentioned, small printers rarely produce great looking prints. Uh, so. But assuming you've got good paper profiles, um, you've done all this, you've got your screen, screen calibrated and everything. The next question, this is the big one I get, is why doesn't my screen match my print or why don't my prints match my screen? Um, and the simple answer is they never will. Um, they are two different things. This is reflecting light. You can see from a window over here, it changes depending on the light. This is emitting light. Um, I've got a print over the top here just to give it a bit of shielding from extraneous light, but you know, they are two different technologies. They are never going to look the same. When it comes down to it, if you are printing, the print is what matters. You may need to make this a bit brighter to make this look okay. In that instance, this looks too bright, this comes out okay. It's always the print that trumps it. So it's always the screen is what gives you uh, an indication of what's gonna come out but it's the test print and the print of your image that is the real proof of it as to whether it's working or not. Now, this is a big thing, and a lot of people say, well, I'm looking at the two here. Never, when you're comparing a print the screen, put them next to each other. It only exacerbates the differences. Put them apart, so if I have this here, so I look at this, 
turn my head, look at that. That's the way to evaluate a print. Don't try and look at both at the same time because you will never get a good match. Simply doesn't work very well. And when you're doing printing evaluation, make sure you're looking at prints, if possible, in the kind of light that you're going to be putting the prints out and looking at them after you've printed it. So there's no point in checking your prints in daylight if all you're ever going to do is have them on the wall in a relatively dimly lit room, such as the one through here, which is not terribly bright. Um, I haven't got bright lighting, it's a, it's a sitting room. I don't want bright lighting, other than if I do want it, and then I switch it on. But in normal print viewing, they're different. So take care how you evaluate your prints, because a lot of when people say, my prints come out wrong, when you drill down into it, and apart from the obvious ones, as they're too dark and monitor problems, it is really because they're expecting what they see here to be what they see here. It will not happen. And it's difficult for some people, I know, to accept that. But once you accept that they're two different things, it makes why prints work and how to get great looking prints so much easier. It really does. It's a, it's a key step in printing, is divorcing the screen from this. The screen is just an intermediate stage on its way between your camera and the print as, a, as an end result. But that's a, that's a big thing. Um, one other thing I would say on looking at print um, on the screen here, um, I've got a grey background. Here. I use a grey background for editing, a neutral grey. I don't use white and I certainly don't use black. Now, there's been a, a sort of tendency in modern interface design for software to have everything on black. Actually, that's really bad if you're doing editing for printing. Because the black background, the way it affects how you perceive the colours, it makes your prints, your pictures, look much more vibrant. They stand out much more against a black background. Well, that's great if you're actually going to mount your prints when you put them up. If you're going to put them on a black background, then, yeah, that's not too bad. But very few people do actually present their prints on a black background. So the black background is influencing how you edit your picture without you even necessarily realising why. And so it's why I go for a neutral grey background. Um, no bright colours, no nothing. Obviously I don't edit here. This is, you know, in case nobody's ever guessed, this is my kitchen. So um, it's not where I do my photo editing work. Uh, there's just not space in my office to, to film these things. But neutral grey background, um, that can make a serious difference. If you're unsure of this, take a picture, and look at it against a white background and a black background. Walk away, come back, look at it. Because that resets your visual perception in many ways. And when you look at it, you'll see it. But so be careful with your background settings as well. Now, I've mentioned this as editing and stuff as part of it. And um, we're almost done. This is uh, nine of the ten that you need to consider if you're looking at making prints to show for yourself, for other people, for exhibition, for sale even, you need to consider what I call, and lots of other people call, your print workflow. Now, your print workflow is every step you take from producing an image in a camera through to a print coming out of a printer. Now, every aspect of that needs some attention. So the printer settings is part of your workflow. Your choice of paper, inks and printer is part of your print workflow. Your editing software is part of your print workflow. So it's looking at the whole thing as a chain, as a process. And that's important because if you've made some glaring mistake in one part of it, and I include myself in this, I've done all these things myself, um, if you make some big mistake partway through it, then that weakens the whole chain. Now, the last bit, the key item that, and this is the one that fewer people really want to hear as an answer to why my prints come out wrong, is, and I'll put it simply, are your pictures any good to start with? Um, 
I'm afraid that a rubbish photo to start with, and by rubbish photo, I go right back to the point of you picking up the camera and deciding you're taking a photo and what you're taking a photo of and your camera settings and things like that. If the picture's no good, then the likelihood of getting a great print is minimal. Now, this, this is one reason I say that learning to print your photos is a great way of, of improving all your photography. Because in printing, uh, this uh, black and white image, this is Wells Cathedral, um, after a famous uh, architectural shot uh, from turn of the uh, 19th, 20th century. And printing this taught me a lot um, about black and white printing, which is a uh, slightly different to a colour printing, but I've got lots of stuff on this, so I won't digress into that. But learning to print, and in particular producing large prints, has fed back to me actually taking photographs at the start. So if I'm thinking of making a print, I go right back to the process of when I get the camera out, when I take it. Now, I've got another video that looks at the process of making this particular print. This is one I did quite a few years ago. It's in Washington State. And I've got a video that describes, and an article to go with it, that describes the entire process from when I was driving along, saw a view I liked, got out, take photos, editing them, printing them, the settings, everything. So effectively from driving along, seeing a view through to this print. Um, and that is a workflow, the entire process right from that. And that's where printing affects all of it. And uh, I'm gonna say printing makes you a better photographer. Anyway, those are my 10 key reasons why your prints come out wrong. Um, and they do, my prints come out wrong as well, so I don't worry about it if they do, it's, uh, it's something to learn from, something to benefit from. But uh, hopefully that's of interest, uh, please do subscribe to the channel, um, I've got lots more stuff like this I'm happy to do, and um, I've got uh, a new printer coming this week I'm told, uh, an Epson ET8550, which is a completely different sort of printer to what I normally look at, got one of those coming on. So. Uh, hope this is of use. Uh, please tell other people about the channel as well. Um, it does help. Um, and the articles on the website. So thank you very much and goodbye.